From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. As always, you know, I want to thank Jack for all the research that he does in connecting the Bible with current events. It's just wonderful how we see everything that God said would happen is happening. This first one is very, very important. The mystery of President Obama's visit to Israel. Very important. And Obama secretly pledges to divide Jerusalem. And then thirdly, Iranian leader says, we must prep for end of times. You've heard Jack talk very specifically about the end of times. Let's see what he means when he says end of times. Friends, you've heard us talk so frequently about a new world order and how it is quickly emerging. But you know, it isn't anything new, and I said that before, but I'd like to reiterate just a little bit and go back to 1922. Take a look here. 1922, the Council of Foreign Relations endorses a world government, world government. 1945, President Truman endorses a world government. On February 17th, Council of Foreign Relations member James P. Warburg tells the subcommittee we shall have world government whether or not we like it. The question is only whether world government will be by consent or by conquest. Very important there, Let Jack. Let me stop there for a minute. All yes, right. How true that is. By consent, Revelation 17, 13. They all had one mind, and that's the nations joining the one world government and the other conquest, Revelation 13, 15. If they don't receive the mark of the one world leader, they're put to death. So Warburg was right. Absolutely right. Now let's go to that last date, once again, 1991. You'll recognize this one. A new world order is praised in the State of the Union address by President George H.W. Bush. And here you see him, George H.W. Bush with Mikhail Gorbachev, all in agreement about a new world order. Here you go, Obama and the new world order. Let's go on, Henry Kissinger. Now I've said this one before. This goes back to 2009. The world must forge a new order or retreat to chaos. Well, here, here you see some chaos. There's Uncle Sam trying to balance the world's problems. You see Iraq, Iran, North Korea, the Middle East, Syria, and all the rest. Iran's president renews call for new world order. They're all talking about it. There's Ahmadinejad talking about it. Now, you know, Jack, before I go on here, I would like to ask a question. Uh, that's um, very, very important to me. Is this new world order found in the Bible? They're all talking about it. It's shaping up. Is it in the Bible? Yes, Rexella. There will only be seven world orders. And I'm not just talking about empires like Britain for a while. I'm talking about global empires, and it's found in Revelation 17.10. There are seven kings. Five are fallen. One is at the time when John wrote the book of Revelation, and one is yet to come, the new world order that Bush was talking about. Can I prove that? Yes. First of all, number one was Assyria, and that is Genesis 2.14. Secondly, Egypt, and that's Genesis 12.10. Thirdly, Babylon, Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. Fourthly, we had the Medes and the Persians, and that is uh, Daniel 5.28. Next, we had Greece, 
That's Daniel 10.20. And finally, we had the Roman Empire, Daniel 9.26 and Romans 1.7. There are the six that already have been, but there's one final one coming, John said, and that is the one world government, the new world order. And it started in our day back there in 22, and there have been some 30 or 40. You just named four of them promoting this new world order. And by the way, there have been seven groups in history promoting and pushing for this. They are the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Club of Rome, the New Age Movement, and of course, the United Nations, all working toward this big goal. One world government, one world order. Jack, it amazes me. Doesn't it amaze you that the Bible actually pertains and talks about what's happening in the world, a one world government? Well, it also talks about ten horns. Can you explain that one, please, Jack? All right. In Daniel chapter 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16, we find the ten horns comparable to the ten toes on Daniel's image in Daniel 2, verses 31 to 33. I've always taught that this would be ten nations pulling in much of the nations of Europe, East and West, to begin the formation of this great Roman Empire. And I thought it would be all European. I've taught it. Many teach it that way. But I found out something as I was studying one day, a message from Rabbi Hagen, who lived 2,000 years ago. And he said, there will come an hour when there will be a 10 division world empire. And that will be the announcement that our Messiah, our Mashiach, is coming to rule and reign from Jerusalem. Then St. Jerome, the great Catholic leader who penned the wonderful Latin Vulgate and preached on the rapture. Rapia he says in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, where it says, caught up, also taught that when there would arise a 10-division world empire, that would be when our Lord Jesus returns to set up his kingdom on earth for 1,000 years. But Rexella, I had missed another point, as we're going to see in a minute. All right. I think that there were two men that really influenced Jack uh, to change his thinking as far as the inclusiveness of the whole world. Now, the first one's Martin Luther. There you see him. Of course, he started the, the Lutheran Church. And there is John Calvin, Christian Reform. Now, these two men taught that there's a more than just the Roman Empire involved. And uh, they really influenced your thinking, didn't they, yes. Jack? Oh, they did, Rexel. I got into my history books because I've heard about an inkling concerning these things, and sure enough, there it was. Both men preached that there would be two legs on the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and the one would be an Islamic leg and the other the Roman leg of Europe. Now, you see, where I was mistaken, as so many are, is that we thought it would just be the European Union that would control all the world. No, no, no. There's going to be two. Now, that image that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream and had Daniel interpret in Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 to 33, begins with the Third World Empire. Assyria and Egypt are already finished, and the head is gold, Babylon the chest and arms of silver, the Medes and the Persians, the stomach and thighs of brass happen to be Greece, and then the two legs of iron are not only Rome like I thought, but now I had that new light from Martin Luther and John Calvin when they said there'll be two legs and the one is of Muslim nations. And that's what they would be called because at that time the Christians had captured Constantinople, which has become Turkey and a Muslim nation. And as I showed you earlier, uh, all these nations, Assyria, Egypt, Medo-Persia, etc., were Muslim nations and are today. That's what they were to become. So you understand Ahmadinejad of Iran much better when he keeps calling for the 
new world order, the one world government that includes the one leg of Islamic nations, the other of the European nations, and the two of them controlling the world. And beloved, we're living at that hour. Even as Amajinus says, we are at the end time as far as Islam is concerned. And some of you Christian preachers won't even talk about the coming of the Lord. There are 10,385 verses on Christ's return in the Bible, one out of every four. Shame on you. Let's see, Jack, how very, very quickly this all shaping up as we read the headlines now. And we all know about the huge conflict between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. Now, we well, very well know that uh, these people here in this picture don't look very happy, do they? Obama and the peace process, will the newly re-elected U.S. president really push for Israeli-Palestinian peace in his second term? And there you see the two leaders going on the mystery of President Obama's visit to Israel. Now, I must read this to you. The administration that supports the democratically elected Muslim Brotherhood of Egypt is snubbing the democratically elected Israeli government. Uh-oh, that is a mystery. And then I'll tell you why it just it probably is not going to go together. The Quran is our law. Jihad is our way. Now this is what they say the Brotherhood wants. The official motto of the Muslim Brotherhood is Allah is our objective. The Prophet is our leader. The Quran is our law. Dying in the way of Allah is our highest hope as it promotes jihad or holy war. In other words, if you don't go along with us, you're out. And of course, you see here Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, conflict is over Israel's existence, not land. It's not that they want more land. They just don't want us to exist. Islamic cleric in Gaza rejects Israel's, there you see it, existence. Netanyahu is right. Obama secretly pledges to divide Jerusalem. Muslim cleric, Jerusalem to be Egypt's capital. And Ahmadinejad wants to go to Gaza, pray in Jerusalem after liberation. Never happened, oh, buddy. Oh, my, oh, my. Now, <laughs> Jack has really enlightened us so much about the importance of Israel. In fact, Bible prophecy really didn't mean that much until Israel became a nation in 1948. And when they took Jerusalem in 1967, then it began to really emerge. Uh, Jack, I, now we see how it's all shaping up so very, very quickly. But Israel had to be a nation and will be a nation right until the Lord comes, right? Oh, Rexella, let me add this. First of all, we have these Christians today who says, Who can know when the Lord is coming? Of that day and hour knows no man. Matthew 24, 36, that's not what Jesus said. Back it up to verse 33, he said, You will know when it's near. I command you in the Greek to know when it's near, even at the door. How? Through signs of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, and chapters 21. Now get this, please. There are always these Christians who are trying to poo-poo the coming of the Lord. And you know you're pictured by God in Revelation 3.15. I know your works are neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot, so then because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. God says, you make me sick. I want to gurgitate. Now, that's a polite word for puke. <laughs> God said it. Now, why? They say, well, we've always had wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places, iniquity abounding, all those signs, Matthew 24 and the rest. So nothing's happened. Nothing's changed. That is not what Jesus said. Matthew 24, 33. How will you know when it's near? When you shall see all the signs happening simultaneously of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. And for the first time in history, they're all here. But he based it on two special signs. Nothing meant anything until Israel again became a nation and they captured Jerusalem. Now watch this. It's 63 B.C. Pompey, the general of Rome, comes to Jerusalem, captures the Jews, takes more than a million out. And from that time onward, they were held captive for 2,011 years. There was no Israel. So the signs were meaningless. 
He said, when you see all the signs in connection with Israel being a nation, I repeat, it's a good teacher, and Jerusalem in Jewish hands. That's it. So they came back. 1948, raised the six-pointed star of David and said, we call ourselves Israel after 2011 years. And in the 1967 battle, the war, they took Jerusalem after 2030 years. No Israel for 2011 years, no Jerusalem in their possession for 2030 years. It's happened in our day, 1948, 1967. It says, when you see those two in existence, then you know it's right at the door, about to come. You're the generation. And oh, I'll tell you, Rexel, that this is really exciting. Why? Because in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, there is a war called Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. And guess what? This war is the war of the latter years and latter days. Latter years, latter days, Ezekiel 38, verses 8 and 16. And who do they go after? Israel! 18 times. Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice and 7, 9, 11, 12, 22, 23, 25, 29. 18 times. There was no Israel to invade for 2,011 years until 1948. So now change your tune a little, will you? And start believing that it's right at the door. Secondly, the war begins because they split Jerusalem and our president has already promised it to the Palestinians. Joel 3.2 begins that war. There was no Jerusalem to begin a war over until 1967. And he said, when you see all the signs of connection with those two, Israel, Jerusalem, Israel, Jerusalem, that's it. Nothing else but that. Praise the Lord. Mm. It's here. You're the generation. All right. Well, let's go on here. Iranian leader, we must prep for end of time. Shiite theology holds that great wars must engulf the earth. Israel is to be destroyed. And only then will the 12th Ayman Mahdi reappear and kill all the infidels raising the flag of Islam in all corners of the world. My answer is no, you won't. Why? Because our Jesus, the true Jesus, not the prophet Jesus, who you make a murderer of because he's to kill all Jews and Christians who won't convert because he's become a Muslim. Bunk! My Jesus returns. And it's pictured in Revelation 19, 11. He comes regally, royally, majestically in a white horse. And he brings the armies of heaven with him, verse 14. He comes as the king of the kings and lord of the lords, verse 16, to rule and reign for a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 4. Then he is recommissioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. The thousand years has passed. Now it's eternity in earth. Revelation 11, 15. The nations of this world are become the nations of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever and forever. Christ, not Mahdi, Christ. And then I love this, Luke 1, 32. The angel Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary that morning, said, Your son shall be great, and he shall be the son of the highest, and he shall sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem, and he shall reign over the house of Israel forever and forever. No, you're not going to destroy Israel. I will give Israel an everlasting name, Isaiah 56, 5. Thank you, Yahweh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, as you sit on that throne soon. You're not going to win, Islam. The Lord Jesus is going to win. Amen, Jack. And you know, <laughs> you can have peace right now in a troubled, troubled world. Someone said to me the other day, I don't even like to read the newspaper or watch the news. But you know why it's a comfort to hear Jack Van Impey? Because he gives you hope. He tells you how you can have peace right now in this troubled world. All the prophecies point to something good, the return of the Lord. And we can be ready for the return of the Lord if we have him in our heart. Do you have him as your savior in your heart, forgiven of all our sins, ready to see him, ready to be with him? Will you open your heart to the Lord? That's why we come into your home. Jack, would you give the invitation right now? Oh, what a wonderful savior is Jesus, my Lord, and how he suffered. God spared not his son, Romans 8, 32. As he was on that cross, covered with the sin of every sinner in the world. 
and all you have to do is accept it. Now, Jesus, you were covered with my sin that day. You died for me. Your precious blood can cleanse me. And I believe that you did it for me as well as others. Thank you, Jesus. And now I accept what you did on the cross of Calvary. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you this day as my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust that you prayed that prayer. If you did, please write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little booklet, absolutely free, First Steps in a New Direction. You can have a new life walking with the Lord in a troubled world. Well, you know, we have a wonderful offer for you. Bob, would you please tell them how they can receive it? To order your copy of the book, God's Good Plan, with the bonus DVD, Terrorism Accelerating, But Peace Coming, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. Please order God's Good Plan because we are also going to be enclosing in an extended DVD that you will want because we are giving more information. And now, friends, as always, I'd like to leave you with a very, very good thought. This one's so significant for today. A changed life is the result of a changed heart. You know how we can have a changed heart? By having the Lord Jesus in the heart. Did you open your heart to Him? I'd love to hear from you. And now we look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>